make it. I want to make it, brother. This world has nothing to offer me. The Bible says uh, if we should gain this whole world and lose our soul, it profits us nothing. You know why? Because flesh is here today and gone tomorrow. It is withered. Hallelujah. I tell you what, these temporal things, and that's what a lot of people get their hearts set upon the temporal things of this life. But there is nothing that this world holds, uh, hallelujah, that I don't uh, count as dung, uh, hallelujah, that I might win Christ. That I might win Christ. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I don't tell this testimony very much, but I just feel to tell a little of it today. Hallelujah. I, you know, I've been trying to make my way back to the Lord. But I could not forgive myself, brother. Even though the Lord had forgiven me. First of all, I could not forgive myself for falling my Lord. For failing Him and falling. Hallelujah. From Him, I could not forgive myself. Hallelujah. And I started praying one day and I said, Lord, I said, help me to forgive myself. I said, Lord, I don't have to ever hold a microphone again. You know, I preached for 10 years in my 20s. Hallelujah. Most of my 20s and the first part of my 30s. I tell you what, and I laid down the word hard as the Lord put it in me to speak it. Thus saith the Lord. He called and ordained me as a prophetess of the Lord. And I tell you what, I told the Lord. I said, I don't ever have to get behind the pulpit again if you just let me open the door and welcome your precious people in. And the Lord told me, He said, My daughter, gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And He said, You must obey what you were put here and ordained for. Hallelujah. And it's not an easy way. It's not. I tell you what. But I, my life is not my own brother. I tell you what, I am bought by a price. You know, Jesus, the flesh part of him, I believe that he felt in his heart that it would have been nice to maybe to marry and have children. But no, he knew he wasn't sent for that. He knew he was sent to carry out the will of the Father. And that's what he kept his mind upon, is fulfilling the will of the Father. We pray. Father, let this mind be in me, which also is in Christ Jesus. What was the mind of Christ? To do the will of the Father. And that's why I say that we each one have got to find our garden of Gethsemane. And we have got to pray our way through and mortify the deeds of this old flesh. That we can take upon his will and cast aside our will. And it's not an easy road to go. But I tell you what, if you'll choose that road and you'll walk that path. I tell you what, he'll light your path up and he'll lead you as you go. You know, David said, Lord, your word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. He said, Lord, you enlarge my steps beneath me. That I fall not. Hallelujah. But while I was out in the world, I started driving an 18 wheeler. I've done it for seven years. Seven and a half years. Made good money. Bought me a home in Savannah. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, it was a nice home. And I and I, it was just gonna be a starter home for me. You know, I had plans, you know, I was gonna build up on even more. Hallelujah. And that, yes, I bought what I wanted to when I wanted it. Hallelujah. When I was driving by myself, a low week for me was around six to seven hundred dollars. A high week for one week I brought home up right at a thousand dollars. Hallelujah. Because I worked hard. Everywhere I worked, I always give a hundred and ten percent. When I was out in the world and I was trying to support my children, I worked two and three jobs. And I tell you what, them jobs were on my feet all the time. But yet I knew that my children, they had to have a roof over their head. They had to have food to eat. Hallelujah. And I had determined in my heart, I didn't care what it took. I was going to do just that. I had nowhere else to turn. And I met a dear friend of mine. She's serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, thank 
thank you, Jesus, her and her husband both. We were out in the world together. Now we're in the kingdom of God together. But I tell you what, when I called her and told her that the Lord had restored me, and, and it was as time, I guess almost a year had passed, and I had been seeking the Lord and praying, and I was telling her, I said, I haven't stepped back in the pulpit yet because I want to make sure that I'm rooted and grounded and firmly planted in the Lord before I take that position again. She said, well, hon, she said, ever since I've ever known you, she said, you give 110% of everything that you do. She said, I know that you're doing the same thing now. And I said, honey, I said, that's all I know to do. And I'll tell you what, that's what God wants us to do is to give more. When we've done everything that we know to do, I tell you what, sometimes we want to reach back there and pat ourselves on the back. But I tell you what, that's just what's expected of us. We have not done no great thing. The Bible tells us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is only our reasonable service. And then go on with this testimony. Hallelujah. I met my husband that's deceased now. Hallelujah. And we were, we had bought, he had bought my wedding rings and I would bought his wedding band. And we was about four and a half years into the relationship. And I, I said, but yet I just couldn't do it for some reason. I just couldn't. And before that, the Lord brought me back in October 2004. And I looked at him and I said, Tony, I said, the Lord has restored me. And I said, I want to serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul. And I said, I can't marry you now. I said, you're not a Christian. You're not serving the Lord. Well, he was kind of, he didn't even do what he was raised in, which was Catholic. He was raised as a Catholic person. And I told him, I said, so we can remain friends. But I said, as far as a relationship that we've had these many years, I said, it ceases as right now. I said, it comes to a halt. Hallelujah, because I value my Lord more. And I would not do anything to displease him. Hallelujah. And he said, well, he said, Brenda, I respect what you're doing. And he said, I don't want to hinder you in any way. But he said, I still love you. I said, well, I still love you too. And I would minister to him and witness to him. Hallelujah. And I remember a time that I witnessed to him. And I believe it was about January or February of 2005. And I was telling him of the peace that God could put in his heart if he would just totally release himself unto God. And as I was ministering to him, he said, well, I'm just not ready to do all that. And I was driving, and I saw his left lung come up before me. And I saw a spot right here at the lower part of his lung. Hallelujah. It was a little bit bigger than a quarter and smaller than a half a dollar. And I said, Tony... I said, you need to go to the doctor and have your lung checked on the left side. He said, Brent, I'm fine. I feel fine. I said, I don't care what you feel like. I said, I'm telling you, God is telling you this because he loves you 